Okay, before we get into the digging tools, uh, sand scoops, knee pads, and other equipment that you're going to uh, probably need, let me um, let me get into exactly what spurred me to do this site for uh, beginning metal detectorists or people who might be interested in metal detecting. Um, I ha I run a charity. It's called Metal Detecting for the Number Four Veterans dot org uh, md4 v dot org um, and I help veterans like myself who suffer from post-traumatic stress disorder um, combat vets um, veterans who've been through very stressful situations uh, sometimes have anxiety um, depression uh, hyper awareness um, insomnia, nightmares, uh, there's all different types of, you know, social uh, isolationist uh, problems, things of that nature that can be symptoms of PTSD. And when I got out of the service in 1976, I had a, a dramatic case of it. And my brother turned me on to metal detecting and I haven't looked back. Metal detecting is a meditation for me it's a joyful time uh, in my head where I'm not thinking about anything except the signals my machine is giving me. We're talking to each other, basically. I'm, I'm constantly adjusting her and helping her to hear the sounds. Um, I'm concentrating on that. I'm not thinking about the things that might be bothering me throughout the day. And it's a, a real stress reliever. So I have helped now we're closing in on 125 veterans throughout all 50 states uh, who cannot necessarily afford their own metal detector or equipment. And we are helping them. We're getting them started in the hobby by providing them with the metal detectors and the equipment that they need. So if you can, please um, send us a donation of any size. Um, we also accept used equipment please call me um, or text me, email me. My contact information is on the site and it's also down below this video. So if you're interested in helping us out to reach veterans um, and, and get some everyday relief for them, make their everyday lives better for them and their families, uh, please get in touch uh, or visit the site and donate if you can. All right, so let's talk about the digging tools that go along with metal detecting. You know, digging a plug, as it's called, or uh, digging up your target uh, the correct way is also a practiced art because you don't want to damage the lawn that you might be digging on or the park or, or the person's property that you're on. Um, you don't want to damage even the woods. You want to leave everything exactly as you found it. So getting the proper digging tool is extremely important. Some people start with a Home Depot trowel that they would use in uh, their gardens. And that works for a little while, uh, but then it bends or it breaks and they got to go get another tool. My advice to you is to get a de dedicated metal detecting hand trowel digging tool. Um, there are many manufacturers. My recommended manufacturer to you is GraveDiggerTools.com. Uh, Eric Wallace uh, makes these tools. He has a family. He's an American. He's a master welder. Um, these tools are made in the USA and they are guaranteed for life. You'll be passing these tools down to your grandkids. Um, they are not expensive compared to other tool makers, uh, such as Lesh, uh, L-E-S-C-H-E, and uh, Predator uh, tools. You want to look all those up. You want to find the tools that are going to do the job for you. I caution you against using a shovel in a park or on private pop property. Do not do it. If you need a shovel, get a dedicated metal detecting shovel. And again, Gravedigger Tools offer these. Predator Tools offer these. 
Lesh offer these. There's any number of um, makers out there that offer these tools. They're not cheap. The shovels start at around $50 and work their way up. So some of these things are expensive. The metal detecting is not a cheap hobby for the most part. Okay, so make sure you have the right digging tools, a good hand trowel and a good shovel, a, a short, uh, like a 30, 36 inch shovel. Um, <clears throat> what else do you need? Well, you need a bag to put your fines in, your good fines and your bad fines. So you need a what's a fines bag, that's what they're called, and they run anywhere from $15 right on up to $25, $30. Uh, it doesn't have to be um, fancy. Heck, I started with a Home uh, a Home Depot nail bag. Uh, I think it was 99 cents. And, you know, I just tied it around my waist and off I went. So, you know, you don't have to be fancy. Um, you're going to need knee pads, all right? Get uh, knee pads that are, are the, why? Why do you need knee pads? Because the first time you need, kneel down on a piece of broken glass, and cut your knee open, or the first time you kneel down on a rock and just go, ouch, you're gonna say, damn, I should have got those knee pads. So get a pair of knee pads, okay? Um, they don't have to be expensive. I think my first pair were $10 at Sears, to tell you the truth. Um, <clears throat> gloves, you need to wear gloves. You're digging in the dirt. Maybe a dog peed there, maybe a dog pooed there. Maybe there's glass, broken glass in there, or sharp rocks. Wear gloves. I wear leather gloves. Uh, you can get three pair of them at Costco for like 20 bucks. And I suggest that you go to your hardware store or, or to Costco if you have access and, and get three pair for uh, 20 bucks and you'll be set for a year, two years with the gloves. All right, um, let's talk about you beach detectors. You're going to need a sand scoop. What is a sand scoop? Well, a sand scoop is basically like um, a sieve. Uh, uh, it just sifts the sand away. At, you dunk it into the sand to where your target is and you dig in there, you pull it out, and you sift out all the sand uh, through the holes or the screen in the sand scoop and your target is in the scoop. Um, now, I suggest a long-handled sand scoop. They start at around $70. Again, they're not cheap. Um, a $70 sand scoop would be considered a dry sand sand scoop. A wet sand sand scoop, they're going to start around $150 for a long handled sand scoop. I, when I was first starting, I used a company called Riley's Treasured Gold, RTG. If you type in RTG sand scoop, you should go to Riley's Treasured Gold. Just look through their selections. Now, these are not the most expensive and they are not the lightest, but these will get you started. And if you find that you are not delighted with metal detecting, you can always sell these scoops for almost exactly what you paid for them. All right, so give that a thought. Riley's Treasured Gold Sand Scoops. All right. Um, I'm often asked about handheld pinpointer metal detectors. Pinpointers make metal detecting a lot easier um a lot more pleasurable however they're they're not a necessity when you're first starting out metal detecting you need to learn how to pinpoint your target and judge the depth of your target and you will see on uh the new startmetaldetecting.com site videos detailing how to pinpoint and how to judge depth now, most modern detectors have depth meters on them, but and they also have pinpointing um, uh, functions as well. So it's, what's important is that you learn how to pinpoint and judge the depth of your target. Now, if you can afford 
a handheld pinpointer, they start the very inexpensive Chinese models, which aren't very good, start at around $35. And a good one, uh, it's, it's made by Garrett Metal Detectors, and it's called their, I think it's called their uh, Pro Pinpointer, AT Pro Pinpointer. That runs about $130. So give it some thought um, and, you know, maybe you want to do a little metal detecting, practice your pinpointing and, and depth uh, prior to buying a uh, handheld pinpointer. But again, a pinpointer does make locating your target a lot more pleasurable and a lot easier, especially as a beginner. Let's talk about um, where to dig and uh, doing your research um, and even when to detect. Um, that'll be coming up here in just a moment. Let's take a break. Okay, so <clears throat> we've got our machine, we've got our equipment, we're ready to go. Where do we go? Where do we go detecting? Well, if you are detecting in local playgrounds, sports fields, parks, you're looking in the same place as everybody else in our hobby since 1976. You need to research places people have gathered in the past. Let's say from, I don't know, 1870 through 1957. You need to start thinking outside the box a little bit and be prepared to do a little work with your head, not just your machine. So let's talk a little bit about some sites that have been productive for me over the years. Old schools. Look, look up the old schools in your area. Go to the library and find out. Uh, look at old plat maps. Find out where schools were located. Are they still located in the same place? Schools are a great place to metal detect. Uh, city and town parks are obvious. We've talked about that. Um, how about circus or fair sites that have been in your area in the past? It's interesting because in many cases, these uh, sites were located on farms in the 1800s because they didn't have huge uh, private parks and, and so forth. And these farms were, in many cases, the only open areas where people could set up their circus tents or fair sites. You want to take a look at old churches. Um, you can always talk to the pastor or the priest um, about uh, the history of the church and even volunteer to, um, if anything is found of, of historical value, donate that back to the church. You can look for old homestead sites, old swimming holes, uh, and, and the areas around old swimming holes have always been very, very productive. Lakes, um, rivers, rope swings, picnic groves. You know, in the 1800s uh, and early 1900s, picnics were held in the groves uh, for churches and for civic groups and so forth. Always look for old picnic groves. Athletic fields are obvious. Look, but don't just look for the present day athletic fields. Look, where where were the baseball fields and the football fields uh, in the early 1900s? Where were those fields? Where were the horse racing tracks? Where were the rodeo arenas, um, the campgrounds? Um, are there ghost towns in your area? Uh, and again, we've already talked about beaches. Um, in my area, here in uh, New York, there are old tavern sites and um, old um, stagecoach rest stops and post, so post offices. They've been extremely productive. Um, always look about, if you're out in rural areas, look around the mailboxes in rural areas. Um, any place people would be hanging out, putting their hands in their pockets, reunion areas, revival sites, fort sites, winter sledding areas. Winter sledding areas go over slowly and completely. Grid those areas. We'll talk about gridding as well. Gosh, what else? Fishing spots, um, fishing camps, 
lookouts, overlook sites, uh, resorts, old barns and outbuildings are extremely productive at times. Um, old battle sites, you know, many, many metal detectors hunt old battle sites from the Revolutionary Era War, the, 18, the War of 1812, the Civil War. Um, there are many of these sites located throughout the country. Um, if you have band shells in your area, be sure to check that out. Race tracks, um, rural boundary walls, old rock walls in my case here on the East Coast. Um, yeah, you'd be surprised how much stuff we find along these walls. Um, roadside fruit and vegetable stands, where were those back in the 30s, uh, 20s? Take a look, 40s, um, if you can locate those areas on the roadsides, those could be extremely productive. Do you have big flea markets in your area in a big field? Check those areas out after the flea markets are open. Ski slopes, another uh, like the sledding slopes, same thing. Oh gosh, you know, I could go on. I'm going to put a list up on the site of all the different places uh, that you want to check out as a new metal detector. And we're also going to be putting up um, different videos on how to do your own research, where to go to research, what to look for at the library, uh, what to look for at the county assessor's office, so on and so forth. How to, how to think outside the box in some of these areas and look at plat maps, uh, what are plat maps, so on and so forth. We'll have these videos on the site at startmetaldetecting.com. Um, you know, private permissions, we haven't really talked about that. A private permission is when you walk up to someone's house and you ask for permission to metal detect their property. And we are going to put up, um, detailed videos on, uh, the proper etiquette, you know, even what you should wear. Um, when you go to visit a person, you want to present your uh, best foot forward to them. Um, you don't want to walk up in dirty blue jeans and, you know, a vote for this guy hat or a vote for that guy hat. Um, we'll go through that, uh, how to get permission to do um, private homes and private property. Um, and I'm also going to um, talk a little bit about online forums where you can gain so much knowledge. There are hundreds and hundreds of years of experience on these online forums. And again, I will be talking to you more about um, which forums I think are the best, uh, where I think you can learn the most, and um, how to join up on these forums. So please come back and um, as we start to build, start metal detecting, we'll have more information for you. And as always, if you have any questions, please, my contact information is down below, Terry Solomon at AOL.com. Email me. Email me and I will answer your question. All right. Thanks for listening. And I hope that this is a good introduction to startmetaldetecting.com.